Hello YouTube, this is Morbid Feast, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get Minecraft and install it. Very, very interesting thing about Minecraft is, well, you used to have to install it into your app data folder, and it would install as .minecraft. You no longer have to do that. If you go to minecraft.net slash download, I will provide the link in the description. Click on Minecraft MSI. You'll download that. Once it downloads, click run. And then hit next. And you'll see that it actually installs into your program files folder now. So click next and leave the create shortcut on desktop. And then click install. User account control is going to come up. Click yes. After it finishes, leave the start Minecraft after closing installer and click finish. Now it's going to go through, download all the files, install Minecraft, and you can actually log in and play. Okay, so I'm going to hit play for the first time, let it pull down the jar files and everything. Doing the install with the MSI installer is actually a whole lot easier than what the older way was for doing the installs. However, we're going to find out if the rumors that it no longer puts everything under the app data folder is true or false. I have a feeling it's going to be false and the majority are still going to be under the app data folder, which is where you're still going to be putting in any mods or... Um, resource packs yeah, I'm not too worried about that right at the moment I already know what the issue is so we just installed everything let's refresh go to roaming minecraft oh look it put everything server resource packs now let's go check so yeah it just puts the absolute bare minimum that it has to in the uh, program files to be able to make it launch and run and then it throws everything else over into the other throws everything else over into the app data so the theories that I've seen that it no longer uses the app data folder is incorrect it actually does so any of your mods and stuff are going to have to still go into the app data folder so Another thing you can do to help out your Minecraft game, if you're running 4 gig of RAM, change that to 1G and change this line here to 1024. So that way it uses 1 gig of RAM. If you're running 8 gig of RAM, change that to 2G and change this line right here to say 2048 to use 2 gig of RAM. That'll actually help your game out a lot and make it run considerably smoother from what it was. And then to change the version of Minecraft that you're playing on, all you have to do is select this little drop down right here on Use Version. And you can select whatever version you want. I'm going to roll this back to 174. Hit Save Profile. Then I'm going to hit Play to show you. Now you can see that it's downloading the jar files required for the older version. And then it kicks off the game. Now because of the fact that I'm running this in a virtual machine, it's not going to actually let the game play, which is absolutely fine. This was just to show you how to get and install and then configure your profile. And we'll do an actual gameplay in just a few. 
And with the VM shut down, now we're going to fire up Minecraft on my primary PC. Now I'm going to show you how I have my profile configured on my actual gaming PC. So I'm going to click Edit Profile. You can see I've got it set to use the latest version. I've got this on 2G. And this part right here is set at 2048. Remember, that was 128 for 128 megabytes. I've got it set on 2048, which is 2048 megabytes, which is actually 2 gig. So I have it set to where it will actually use 2 gig of RAM for the gameplay. So that way it has enough memory allocated to it to run properly. This one was installed by the MSA, M, MSI installer in Windows 10. It runs absolutely great. I haven't had any problems with it. And you do still have to go to the actual app data folder in order to install your uh, mods, add-ons, and to install your resource packs. Which isn't really a bad thing. I mean, that's the way it's always been. So don't let the MSI installer fool you. It does create the uh, program file program file uh, folder for Minecraft, but all it uses is absolute bare minimum that it has to put in there to make Minecraft be able to start and run from that folder. So with all that set, once you have it configured, hit Save Profile, and then all you have to do is hit Play, and it'll launch the game. Alright, and I'm going to log into my own personal server. And it'll start out a little bit buggy at first sometimes until it finally gets everything caught up. And this is running on a 64 bit install using the 64 bit version of Java. So my view distance is very, very far. As long as you're using the 64-bit version, everything is enhanced considerably and your view distance is much greater. It also handles the 3D graphics acceleration quite a bit better than what it does with the 32-bit uh, version of Java and the regular 32-bit install. So if you're running a 64-bit system, very much so take advantage of the 64-bit uh, the Java and the expanded capabilities in Minecraft because of that. Let me finish this wall and I'll actually show you what I'm working on here. <laughs> this is, like I said, this is my server. Me and my daughter, Lady Brio 2, both play on here a lot. Um, I'm actually working on the castle for the Wicked Witch of the West as the area that I'm working on is themed after the Wizard of Oz. So here's the top part. This is the first level of the castle. It's going to be considerably taller. The hallway up is on fire. No surprise there. Very, very, very long, expansive bridge. with arrows on it for some awkward reason. Beware of Theodora. Caution, possible random fire. Trust me, when I get done, yeah, there may very well be random fire. This right here is kind of the central garden. This is the central point that's going to take you four separate directions. Caution for random fire. Beware of Theodora. Every way you go is going to take you to Theodora's castle. And you're going to go into the castle at different levels and places. So, let's go to the central hub. West Quadrant, Wicked City of Theodora. 
North Quadrant, the good city of La Costa. Do not let the movies fool you. You have the the good witch of the north and the good witch of the south. The good witch of the north was actually La Costa. And Glinda was the good witch of the south, not the north. And then you have Evanora for the east. I haven't actually worked on those areas yet. Once I finally get the Wicked Witch of the West done, then I'm going to go to the north quadrant and everything else and finish those off. I have the massive staircase that leads you all the way up here. And I'll be honest, no, my daughter has not been helping me out with any of this. I've been building it entirely myself. While well, she and her friends actually play around doing other things, I really don't want anybody else's help due to I want it to come out the way I'm trying to get it set up. And then I will actually end up setting this up as a um, kind of a survival thing where you're going to do like the Witch in the Woods scenario. It says, beware, caution for dogs, and the owner might kill you. I am the owner, and yeah, uh, I probably will kill you if you mess with my crap. That's just how I am. Morbid Feast Sky City, Central Hub, Main Column. Then you have, beware, caution for dogs, and the owner might kill you. I put that on there, and my daughter has been extensively warning people, you know, be very careful because I probably will. Now, any of you that are bronies, uh, Pega sisters, or you know, extremely familiar with My Little Pony, will probably recognize a lot of this area. This is one of the maps that my daughter wanted, so we downloaded it. It is all My Little Pony. She absolutely loves this map. No surprise there, huh? There's a lot of stuff she has been doing with various parts of this. As you can see, this tent's actually been claimed by someone. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if a few others have as well. She's got several friends that she brings on here from time to time. So yeah, this is one of the areas that we play around in. We do several different uh, survival scenarios, all kinds of different things. So this is one of the works in progress, and she has her My Little Pony thing. I have my Wizard of Oz thing going on, so it's going to be interesting to see how it all turns out because the My Little Pony stuff's on the ground. All my stuff's going to be up in the sky or underground. So... Anybody that gets on here, you're going to have a blast, and feel free to play around in a lot of different areas. Just try not to mess up anything that's already been established. If you're going to start building, make sure you get way, 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 way out of the area, and try to not mess with too much of the My Little Pony stuff that's been established. This isn't an ever-expansive world. It does have borders and edges, but it's still pretty good size. So, if you get on here with my daughter, uh, she's probably going to flip out if you actually start building somewhere you shouldn't. So, the server's there. Have fun with it. Make sure you get your Minecraft configured properly, depending on your system for how much RAM you have. Most importantly with Minecraft, have a freaking blast. I mean, that's the whole point. I keep backups of this server, so honestly, if you really want to get on here and play around and do something stupid, it's not going to be a big deal, but uh, it's just one of those things. You always want to make sure you keep backups of your world. It's not hard to do. All you got to do is make a copy of the folder. big thing is you know making sure you're using the 64-bit version of Java and making sure that you have the RAM dedicated to it to support a smooth gameplay like this so guys 
get Minecraft. It's a great game. It's pretty well free creation realm. You can do whatever you want and have a freaking blast. This is Morbid Feast. We'll catch you around.